Hey guys, as you may have noticed, the YouTube channel has changed, so the intro will thus be changing, and there's now an actual intro, so yeah, but welcome to the new OpenTech Systems and Electric video. I don't know what I'm doing. I just figured I'd come down here and set some stuff off. I, uh, I got bored, so yeah, so um, <clears throat> I know something I'll do also. I'll, nah, no, nah, I'll do that at the end for the video. I'll make that a K video. So, um, nothing's really changed. We still have the BG12 LX. Uh, let's actually... Let's cover this to single action real quick. So, to do this, it's really easy. Take the cover off. Flip it up, pull it down over the latches, take the spring off, just like that, take your new plate, put the spring on it, whoops, try this again. the spring on it. Shoot. Yeah, I really cannot lose that. Okay, let's try this again. Come on. Spring on there, you pull it down and rock it up like that. Boom, now single action. So we'll go ahead and mount this really. Go ahead and mount this really quick. like that now as you can see it's now single action so go ahead and zoom back out here and uh let's do a change let's activate the weather radio first so quick changes here the weather radio right there now activates through a fire alarm that's the only way i can do it i hate it because it's technically not right, but I have no other option. Activates through a fire alarm. It is set as zone group five, which sets off this little mini horn thing here. Um, it does not set off the fire strobe. This is set as gr zone group one, which sets off the strobe and does not set off that horn. So we will have noise for the first time in today's test. Um, when I set the weather radio off. Now there's an interesting code that I'm using on this, so. I'm not going to spoil it. We'll see if you can figure it out. Um, I will tell you at the end of the test what it is. Uh, but go ahead and place in the comments down below if you already know what it is. So we're going to go over here to the weather radio. Hit menu. Scroll to alert test. Got an ultra ride for this one. We're going to hit select. There is a seven second pre-alarm.
All right. Tell me if you know what coding that is. Uh, we'll do a reset. I could technically re-alarm, but eh, I don't want to. You can see the LEDs on right there for the dialer, so it's communicating the central station. And then, I actually don't know where that LED is from not being able to look at the board. Right there, it's above that. I missed it. I'll know for next time where it is, though. It's right there. Alright, so our system's normal. We'll give it a couple seconds just to make sure it's pulled everything. Alright. Three, two, one. I am not shooting this in 120 frames. I forgot. So, yeah. Plus, it's a really large file if I do that. So, we'll go do a reset. And then if you look... Crap. I'm gonna miss it again. Nope. And we're not. See that green LED that just lit up right over here? About just got a real alarm. I will uh, zoom back in on that. Hopefully, whoop. All right, I'm gonna do a, we're gonna kill the AC power out of it. Look right there, there's a light that's gonna turn on. Right there toward the middle of the screen. Right there. See it? That's the central station acknowledging the um, the request for, or, or acknowledging the um, event. Because if you were to look here, that light turns off, the dial light turns off immediately after that. So if you actually tap into the phone line, and um, if you actually tap into the phone line and are listening to it, you'll hear the acknowledgement from the central station, the do tick right when that flashes. So we now have no AC power. So, um, technically we do because the way this is being done, but now we don't have any AC power. Let's go ahead and restore that. Yeah, I just want to do this quick video. I was bored and had nothing to do. And uh, when I used to use my new intro, so nah, boom, there you go. Go ahead and look at this. You can see it's dialing by the lights flashing. Yeah, just finished. So got that all locked up. I think everyone's seen this already. Let me. you haven't seen this. Cat. <laughs> this allows me what, wrong way. This allows me to open the entire system up.
And then right down here, there's a gate latch. I can do that, which keeps the board open so I can access all the wiring um, and get to anything I need to do in the back of the system. So I haven't labeled any of this yet. Eventually I will, but I know what it is right now. Since the system's so small. This is NAC one. This is the jack to the weather radio. This is, let me think. This is SLC, main LCC. So this is the, wait, is it? It might not be. I might be actually wrong. I might've forgotten. I'm pretty sure that, yeah, it is, right? Let's look. Yeah, I was right. So this is the SLC from the panel it going into the junction box. This is, um, is this the grounding wire? I actually forget what that one is. No, it's not. It's not the grounding wire. Oh yeah, that, duh. That's the monitor module. Kind of forgot that it was there. So <clears throat> let's start this over. This is the zone to the weather radio. This is NAC1. This is the um, monitor module that does the weather radio, the dual monitor module, SLC. This is the main SLC to everything. This is what spliced into. This is the pole station monitor module. Then this one right here, which is very tight and takes most slack out. This is the DC power supply right here. This is what, um, Gives it a, this is what gives it, that's the battery. Um, so that's the power supply. Then all of the green wires you see, so this wire and this wire, all the ones you can see are um, ground wires. This one too, this is the ground for, this is the main ground. So everything but the knack is grounded. I just haven't gotten to that yet because I have to get the step stool to do it and eh. It doesn't really need to be grounded, but I will demonstrate that actually, because I can the ground fault on, on the whole system. So this is here. So the system can't be tampered with. You see it opens freely now. It also keeps the board from swinging open, which wasn't ever really a problem, but when you would press, like it naturally, because the board is warped a bit, wants to stay here. So like when you would pull the pull station, the whole board would bounce. So, this is now locked, shut, as you can see. It keeps the board from wanting to move a whole lot. It's it's tied into the shelf here. So, I mean, like, you can, you can move it and pull the whole shelf with it. But the main thing is it prevents you from getting the back of the board to hit the power strip switch and access any of the wires. You You would have to just unscrew i mean i guess you could come over here and unscrew it it'd be kind of hard to do it just makes it more difficult to do stuff and it, technically if you were really desperate you can move all the stuff out of the way and then pull the shelf and just move the whole thing but you can't unlock it unless you have the key i need to put the key in a different spot to be honest too so then you just twist this Now it's unlocked and you can do what I call half lock, which is if you're working on it and you don't want it flying open, you can lock it right there to where it doesn't move, but it's not fully over and you can still unlock it because once you put it here, it locks it shut and you have to have the key to open it. But uh, when I buy it, I'll probably buy one for my birthday. I'll buy a, the right fire light key. I'll put the right lock back on it. This is a lock that I had that fits Cat30. It's a fire alarm box lock, but it fits this Cat30 key better than the original Firelight key did. It's, uh, I think it's in here somewhere. Yeah. It's right here. And then this is my BG12SL pull station, the one that's broken that I swapped this for. I'm gonna put this in here as soon as I get a key too. So it'll be freaking locked and not hex, I hate hex, so. 
that'll be swapped back. Or I could put that other key and go right in here. Uh, but basically, that's the system. Uh, I plan on getting some Romex to a couple reasons why. I plan on getting some Romex so I can run this wire behind the board. This wire is literally just long enough to reach. It's it. Daddy, you're not supposed to do this, and I don't care. It's tied in with the. I forgot that that's drilled there, and I can shock myself. I need to fix that someday. Um, <laughs> regardless, it's tied in with the AC power. You can't really see it, and I'm not wanting to unmelt this, but eh, you kind of can. It's tied in with the AC power that's feeding the, the the panel at the same time, which is fine. It works. You wouldn't want to do that in a building, but eh, I don't care. Like I said, it's fine. It works. Um, however, screw you too, then. However, oh, do that. I don't like the way it looks, and this I actually was going to have in the panel and ran it out of it for some reason. So let's fix that really quick while I'm here talking. So maybe where my screwdrivers go? Bro. Really? in here. Wrong place. Actually, you don't see the flat bit. Bruh. Oh, there it is. Have some paper. So what happened is I ran all the SLC wires and we're going to get a knack bolt. Ah, crap. There's nothing I can do about that. So, I ran all the SLC wires originally in the front of the board, and it didn't look very good. So, I ran them on the back of the board. Um, and then, it didn't have enough wire to run that through the board, so I, I didn't. Um, I think positive is, I would have been wrong. So I didn't run it on the back of the board because I couldn't. I didn't have enough room or enough slack in the wire to run it. So I'll get some Romex and uh, fix that. I also need to get um, some more back boxes. I've got, fortunately, the wrong size ones for some stuff. Bought the wrong side because I bought the back boxes before the system. So, yeah, I gotta figure out something to do with about that. But that a test uh, easy way since I forgot to hook this back up I wonder if I could get it with this probably or not hello there it goes Still pretty loud. All 
Alrighty, so that's gonna wrap this video up. Uh, yep, I mean that about does it. Um, so for those of you who I forgot about this, it's almost. Come on, I'm gonna wrap the video up. For those of you who were not able to figure out the coding for that little mini horn thing, I'm not surprised. Um, you've probably never ever heard it. That coding is called California code. And it's basically five seconds on and like five seconds off, some, something around that. Uh, I have never heard it in my life. I know what it is. I mean, I knew about it before I had the system, but it, you normally don't hear it. So, yeah, it, it's an interesting coding scheme. But with that being said, that's going to go ahead and wrap this video up. And I uh, hope you guys like the new intro. hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please rate, comment, and subscribe. Um, leave what your favorite alarm is down in the comments, and I might try to buy one. Your favorite fire alarm horn strobe strobe horn whatever it is leave your favorite alarm uh i have a system sensor mask but i don't have the trim plate for it and realistically i don't really want to buy one so i can't use it yet but leave your favorite alarm in the comments i'll try to buy one peace guys